You know what it I mean? Might be. I saw a lot of people in the interviews with Keanu right when the movie was coming out. They all kept wanting to press him about the relig- religious angle. Did you read religious texts and all these things? And he just wasn't, he didn't care to talk about that. He felt that religion was personal and he didn't want to go there. He tried to make the character more like you guys have been saying, lived in. He wanted it to seem like this is just another day at the job. It's not right. a religious movie. It's about just another day at the office, but his office happens to be fighting demons. Yeah, a fictional world. And, and Keanu's actually um, very quiet about his faith. Like he, I think he's he's got a he's a guy who like drops hints that he's a quite quite a man of faith, but he's very very quiet about it. Yeah, uh, and you can also see that like oh, he's like very generous and like um, he's into charity. Like he's he's one of the most giving giving actors and like humble guys out there. Every film just, set, you hear a story about him dropping cash on s- somebody from the the crew. Yeah, well, he's a good yeah, dude, no, isn't so, he? He's he's a great dude, and I think he he's just wise to keep his personal life personal. People don't do that very often; it always backfires. I, I like uh, there's an article from Tor where it says that Constantine is a terrible Hellblazer movie, but it's a very good, like a great noir. And I can totally see that because you kind of have the femme fatale a little bit coming in. You know, you have the woman coming into his life. You have the mystery. He gets drawn deeper into it. Uh, it leads towards, like, you know, him kind of dying. So it does have a very noirish vibe, but it's not a good adaptation. But if you look at it as like a spinoff, I think it's a – I love that kind of noir feeling of it. And also they said that looks dirty. I know I'm going off on tangent. But and there's movies in L.A., right, where L.A. is filmed like a beautiful paradise – but Francis yep. Lawrence went out of his way to really show the seedier parts. So it wasn't L.A. And oh. they brought in a specific uh, set designer to make the area of California they were in look realistic downtown L.A. So oh. they made the area look gritty like L.A. Oh, even that's though cool. it wasn't. I mean, probably cheaper. It's expensive to film in L.A. But the, I don't know. I feel yeah. like they, they made this. Like, that movie Spring Breakers, I know a lot of people haven't watched it. But... They filmed in St. Pete, and they made Florida look grimy. And I'm like, hey, that's right. <laughs> so it kind of made me happy yeah. that they captured that, like, in this film. Yeah, absolutely. So have you guys seen the movie um, Dylan Dog? Yes, uh, with Brandon Routh. Yeah. Yeah. So I, that didn't exist when I saw this movie. But watching it again, I'm like, this is kind of like a serious version of Dylan Dog. <laughs> They, they both have, like, the, the plucky sidekick that really wants yep. to do what they're doing. Jazz. And, they're like, they're this, kind of, this kind of crossover thing. So I want to see the crossover between Constantine and Dylan Dog. Ooh. Oh, I'd love that. So in one of Keanu's interviews, he said at the time, back in 2005, that he would love to do a sequel because this is one of the best experiences he's ever had. He had a lot of fun. He said we could make it a whole universe. There would be a son of Constantine, and I'd play him too, and it would be CGI. (laughs) So I think all of that should wrap together. And then, Adam, did you see the after the credits scene? Um, So I I didn't, but I've just read about it in in research doing it looking up today that there was one i hadn't seen i always thought the end scene was what i thought was a, a beautiful moment which is where he like puts a piece of gum in his mouth instead of a cigarette and he has a look of total and utter disdain <laughs> i got bummed out too because i i hate gum smacking so when i saw him chewing it i'm like i hope he doesn't do this in the sequel <laughs> But the, back. the after the credit scene, I thought so they could wrap that into this whole world we've created here with Dylan Dog. Yeah, no, a hundred percent, hundred percent. Toss in um, Michael the, J. Fox from the Frighteners. <laughs> right, but now there was a Constantine TV show two years ago. How was it? It was amazing. Oh, really? So it, yeah, it was. It was. Um, it wasn't officially part of the Arrowverse. But then it was retcon, and he was brought into an episode of Arrow, and then he was like a full character on Legends of Tomorrow last year. Yeah. So, full disclosure, uh, we haven't watched those shows. I watch Supergirl occasionally. Sometimes we'll watch their crossover episodes. They always seem fun. But we've actually been to the Dragon Con panels for all of the DC TV villains, and they are just the funnest guys to watch. Yeah. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And Absolutely, if, they're they're great. And if you guys go to www or if you go to YouTube and you go to Rotten Tomatoes homepage, I pulled the data and did a bunch of the data analysis for the Marvel's Defenders versus Arrowverse video. So if you watch that clip, uh, I had to do all the data analysis and pull all the questions together for it. So you'll see who the winner is if you go watch it. 
but you should see it. Yeah. And also, Constantine filmed in Atlanta, and I had a bunch of friends who worked on it, and it was all nights, so they were all miserable. Yes, the pool battle was filmed at three, starting at 3 a.m. for makeup and prosthetics. That's crazy. Demons. Yeah, they so felt they were in there for weeks. I want to say this movie, too, has a weird, perfect balance of visual and practical effects. Oh, for sure. Ooh, right? ooh like I they, have some fun stuff on that. <laughs> go for it. So, costume designer Louise, I'm going to butcher this, Frogly? Frogly? She created the Hell two Wardrobe. Names. Yep, two names. And, Everybody's got two names. And it was stonewashed clothing that they aged by applying cheesecloth, cheesecloth, yak hair, polyester batting, liquid latex, then topped it with dust and dirt. So that's how the people in Hell got their look. And then it took 48 hours to make each person's piece of clothing for that scene. Whoa. That's incredible. The fist fight in Hell? Yeah, for when they're all climbing over each other in Hell. They're scrapping. And the bug demon, that took months for the textile artist to get correct. They wanted it to look like a bunch of bugs going all over the place. And they said they went through tons of samples of cloth, but the final was made out of fleece, cheesecloth, wool, sequins, beads, feathers, human hair, and toy bugs. And the designer described it as completely revolting. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know, that's a great quote. And our... Costume was totally revolting. Thank you. We did our job. And Stan Winston did work on this as well. Some of the creature yes, design. Well, I think my favorite my favorite gag in it, or like shot or effect, or whatever you want to call it, is in the opening scene when there's there's that the exorcisms going on, and he cracks the door open, and she's like on the roof. Oh yeah. The exorcism. But it's just a flipped camera angle. She's on the floor, but it's done so well, and it's just like so seamless to put in there. I'm like ah. I know how they did it, and it still looks incredible. And just uh, the uh, the scene I love the most is where, uh, so Keanu's on his back, and Gabriel Tilda Swint Tilda Swinton's in this movie, y'all, and um, <laughs> Tilda Swinton and John Dressed Hansu. impeccably. Yeah. She looks great with matching it tie, gets... double breasted suit. Yep. Who? Okay, here here you say who 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 did it better in this movie? Who looks better? Tilda Swinton or Gavin Rosdale? Oh, that's oh. tough. I don't know. I mean, is, yeah, Gabriel Gavin in the Rosdale library was, is on point. Right? Pink tie. Loved it. N now, there's something interesting. On the commentary, they said that Keanu was kind of annoyed at Gavin because he thought that Gavin just looked perfect all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess, well, we gotta give it to, I guess we got to give it to Gavin, he, right? He did, though. He's not wrong. He did. Yeah. He, yeah. Gavin Rosdale. I, I like his – he has my favorite – he has a couple of my favorite lines in this. Actually – that thing where he goes up and sniffs Keanu. Also, the devil tries to lick Keanu. Like they have a, these demons have a thing for uh, Keanu in this movie. It's delicious. Yeah, he's like, yeah, he smells them, <laughs> and then it's delicious. But I love when he said, "I was born of fire." After he gets hit with the brass knuckles, and he's, "What? Well, I was born of a this." Is that the line? Yeah. Oh yeah, he tells him that he has to try harder. It was disappointing that he went after him with fire. I love that, and he wants a sequel too. Gavin Rossdale uh, in 2017 was like, "Let's do it." We, he's like, "That was a, I love that movie." He's like, "I got so to look I awesome." I want to say this. Gavin Rosdale is like one of my favorite people. He had like he was in that Ben Bush. Well, actually, in Canada, we called it Bush X because we have a weird band in Canada already called Bush. Hey. So every, every Bush album has a little X beside the name. We used to call them Bush X. Um, but like he's still touring with Bush right now. And it's incredible. The music they're playing like it's incredible. Yeah, there's some big people... tour coming through here. I think. Yeah, they're with uh, Our Lady Peace and Live. Yep. They're with Live right yeah. now. Holy rolling thunder chasing the wind, right? Yeah. Well, Our Lady Peace is a big Canadian band, too. They're huge up here. Oh, what's that? They have one song that I love. Well, they did, like, Naveed and Starseed and, like, yeah. Clumsy. And, Clumsy. Like, like, yeah. And so they're they're great, but like everybody writes them off as, like, a one-hit wonder musician because he had, like, the 16 Stone album. But, like, he has continuously put out great music, and their band is fantastic. And he was dynamite in this. He just didn't look good. He was like, maybe my favorite part of this movie was Gavin Rosdale. And I asked myself, why hasn't he done more? Touring? I know he got busy so. with the family, right? For a while. Yeah. They I'm passed. just saying, like, I, I would put him, check, like, my fantasy booking, if I could say, like, you could, you could make one movie with Gavin Rosdale, would it be? Escape from New York reboot. Oh. Just looking awesome. Just looking awesome, give him an eye patch, it'd be amazing. I would do a prequel 
called Escape from Cleveland, and it tells the story of what happened in Cleveland. Oh, I love that. <laughs> so he'd have two eyes. That'd be Captain Ron. Maybe. The end scene, he gets the eye patch. They should do a prequel to Cleveland called Escape from Tampa, and that's where he gets the eye patch. Oh, gosh. It's too gross. Because <laughs> that's... But this cast, right? All right, so Keanu Reeves, you have uh, Oscar winner, Rachel Weisz. Uh, she should have won for the favorite. She was amazing. Tilda Swinton, Oscar winner. Jaiman Hansu, Oscar nominee. Shia LaBeouf, I don't care. In movies like American Honey, he's put in some good... <laughs> Shia LaBeouf, I don't care. <laughs> no, he, no, no. Like, I was going to say, if people are, are sh like t twisting their eyes at him, I liked his casting in Transformer. I thought he was a refreshing action lead. And then I liked... Yep. I liked him a lot in American Honey. I don't I, I don't think in the right movie he's great. Then you have Gavin Rosdale who nailed his part. And then you had Peter Stormare who he made a feast out of his role. And this he yes. he and you know, they originally wanted him to be more dressed up. They wanted him to have these tattoos that oh, moved. They wanted him to have a spiked dog collar, bare chest and leather pants. They wanted him to look like uh uh the dude from the Fright Night remake. It's amazing. Um, he sounds like Peter. sounds like the, David Tennant. The, yeah. Well, he, want, he wanted to be like the uh, the guys from The Dark Knight Returns, that comic book, like all those mutants that just yeah. shirtless with spiked collars on. I but, love that uh, Constantine refers to him as Lou. Yeah. <laughs> Not Lucifer, just Lou. They're so cash. And just his, I, I don't know, Stormare. He, he, I love what he said to the director. He's like, I think he was really smart about it. He, because uh, uh, Dino um, Divanchera, D Dino. Another a big producer did it. I'll look up his name at the break. But he's like, guys, no one's gonna be listening to my words. He's like, just let people listen to my words. And because of that, I mean, he's a very uh, one of the most popular on-screen devils, I think, because yeah. he just he so he has the white suit, right? But he also he he like wants to he seems like he wants to explode out of his body. Well, they had the yeah. weird the veins on his face too. And then the tattoos coming up his neck that seemed to move, like, get mad with him. Yeah. And then he licks yeah. Keanu. So improv. The suits that the suits that all the archangels and demons and then Lou eventually wears. Um, I was reading one article. Um, I think it was with, I think it was with the the, the director of photography. Um, but there was apparently a like eight. Remember like the ABC miniseries. Back in like the nineties, they had the like Gulliver's Travels and yeah. Troy. So they did a Jesus one. And it was like four days long of Jesus. And when he's tempted by the devil in the in the desert, the devil shows up wearing a suit. And like ninety seven that was like breakthrough. And then they're like he said, We love the idea of like all these like, you know, hellish characters just like prim and proper and just like dressed to the nines. I mean, yeah. they were dressed great. Yeah, yeah they, they, they looked fabulous. better than even. Ros They're the only clean things in the movie. Rosda had matching socks and ties. All right, so how about <laughs> this, guys? Let's go take a break. Let's all get in beautiful outfits, right? Let's match. We'll take some photos. When we come back, we'll talk some more Constantine. Welcome back to Movies, Films, and Flicks. I look great right now. I look fabulous. <laughs> this tie and these socks, you just can't beat this combination i actually went out today specifically and uh bought a tie for the podcast oh man and i i explained to the people at moore's the suit store that i needed the most expensive tie in the store because i needed to look gavin rosdale good i mean you look great right now man and you're holding a guitar it's it's the it's the gavin rosdale in me i mean i'm it, and there's it? tar dripping from the bottom of the guitar oh yeah mud bogs no, and i have I, <laughs> I, Keanu's look in this movie is the look that I would, I love. So like you know, those those um you know those Japanese yakuza movies where those the the guys have like the the black uh, tie, the white shirt, and like the the yeah. tailored uh, suit coat, and Keanu wears that and that not as tailored. That's the look I would love. I'm just too. I think I'm. I just I don't know. I couldn't pull that off. So his it's called, it's called the Blues Brothers look. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> His raincoat was actually something that the costume designer spent a lot of time on. It's an English 1960s inspired raincoat that was slim and graceful looking. But due to all the water effects on set, they had 25 duplicate coats for him to switch out to. What? And 50 pairs of shoes. That's crazy. Oh, I love it. That's now, uh, amazing. I want to blow everyone's mind here. 
and you've I, done it four times already. Keep going. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's going to be everywhere. It's going to be like that bug guts, the crab guts. So in this movie, Akiva Goldsman drops a really amazing scene. 